Are you ready? Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us again for our daily Bible reading time. And I'm so thankful you have joined us again. This is uh, day 262 of our chronological journey through the Bible in a year. And for this time, we're going to cover Ezra, Ezra chapters 4 through 6, and then we're going to jump over to Psalm 137 as well. So let's get right to it. If you're ready to go, I think we're set here. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Opposition to Rebuilding the Temple, Chapter 4 When the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the returned exiles were building a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, they approached Zerubbabel and the family heads and said to them, Let us build with you, for we also worship your God and have been sacrificing to him since the time King Esarhaddon of Ashur brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Yeshua, and the other heads of Israel's families answered them, You may have no part with us in building a house for our God, since we alone will build it for the Lord, the God of Israel, as King Koresh, the king of Paras, has commanded us. Then the people who were already in the land discouraged the people of Judah, and made them afraid to build. They also bribed officials to act against them to frustrate their plans throughout the reign of King Koresh of Paras and until the reign of King Daryawish of Paras. Opposition to Rebuilding the City At the beginning of the reign of Ahasuerus, the, the people were already in the land. <laughs> the people who were already in the land wrote an accusation against the residents of Judah and Yerushalayim. During the time of Artachshast of Paras, Bishlam, Mitredat, Havel, and the rest of his colleagues wrote to King Artachshast. The letter was written in Aramaic and translated. Rehum, the chief deputy, and Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter to King Artachshast concerning Yerushalayim as follows. From Rehum, the chief deputy, Shimshai the scribe, and the rest of their colleagues, the judges and magistrates from Tripolis, Paras, Erech, Babel, Shushan, that is, the people of Elam, and the rest of the peoples whom the great and illustrious Ashurbanipal deported and settled in the cities of Shamron and the region west of the Euphrates River. This is the text of the letter they sent to him. To King Artachshas, from your servants, the men from the region west of the Euphrates River, let it be known to the king that the Jews who came from you have returned to us at Jerusalem. They are rebuilding that rebellious and evil city, finishing its walls and repairing its foundations. Let it now be known to the king that if that city is rebuilt and its walls are finished, they will not pay tribute, duty, or land tax, and the royal revenue will suffer. Since we have taken an oath of loyalty to the king, and it is not right for us to witness his dishonor. We have sent to inform the king that a search should be made in your predecessor's record books. In these record books, you will discover and verify that the city is a rebellious city, harmful to kings and provinces. There have been revolts in it since ancient times. That is why this city was destroyed. We advise the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are finished, you will not have any possession west of the Euphrates. Artachshas reply. The king sent a reply to his chief deputy, Rehum, Shimshai the scribe, and the rest of their colleagues living in Shamron and elsewhere in the region west of the Euphrates River. Greetings. 
The letter you sent us has been translated and read in my presence. I issued a decree and a search was conducted. It was discovered that this city has had uprisings against kings since ancient times, and there have been rebellions and revolts in it. Powerful kings have also ruled over Yerushalayim and exercised authority over the whole region west of the Euphrates River, and tribute, duty, and land tax were paid to them. Therefore, issue an order for these men to stop, so that this city will not be rebuilt until a further decree has been pronounced by me. See that you not neglect this matter, otherwise the damage will increase and the royal interests will suffer. As soon as the text of King Artakshas' letter was read to Rehum, Shimshai the scribe, and their colleagues, they immediately went to the Jews in Jerusalem and forcibly stopped them. Rebuilding of the temple resumed. Now the construction of God's house in Jerusalem had stopped and remained at a standstill until the second year of the reign of King Daryawish of Paras. Chapter 5 But when the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Yidu, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem, in the name of the God of Israel who was over them, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Yeshua, son of Yosadak, began to rebuild God's house in Jerusalem. The prophets of God were with them, helping them. At that time, Tatanai, the governor of the region west of the Euphrates River, Starvosnai and their colleagues came to the Jews and asked, Who gave you the order to rebuild this temple and finish this structure? They also asked them, What are the names of the workers who are constructing this building? But God was watching over the Jewish elders. These men wouldn't stop them until a report was sent to Daryawish so that they could receive written instructions about this matter. The letter to Dar Daryawish. This is the text of the letter that Tatanai, the governor of the region west of the Euphrates River, Shtar Bosnai, and their colleagues, the officials in the region, sent to King Daryawish. They sent him a report written as follows. To King Daryawish, all greetings. Let it be known to the king that we went to the house of the great God in the province of Judah. It is being built with cut stones, and its beams are being set in the walls. This work is being done diligently and succeeding through the people's efforts. So we questioned the elders and asked, Who gave you the order to rebuild this temple and finish this structure? We also asked them for their names, so that we could write down the names of their leaders for your information. This is the reply they gave us. We are the servants of the God of the heavens and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and finished. But since our ancestors angered the God of the heavens, he handed them over to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babel, the Ben Hakazim, who destroyed this temple and deported the people to Babel. However, in the first year of King Koresh of Babel, he issued a decree to rebuild the house of God. He also took from the temple in Babel the gold and silver articles of God's house that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem, and carried them to the temple in Babel. He released them from the temple in Babel to a man named Sheshbatsar, the governor, by the appointment of King Koresh. Koresh told him, Take these articles, put them in the temple in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be rebuilt on its original site. Then this same Sheshbazar came and laid the foundation of God's house in Jerusalem. It has been under construction from that time until now. 
but it has not been completed. So, if it pleases the king, let a search of the royal archives in Babel be conducted to see if it is true that a decree was issued by King Koresh to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. Let the king's decision regarding this matter be sent to us. Daryawish's Search, Chapter 6 King Daryawish gave the order, and they searched in the library of Babel in the archives. But it was in the fortress of Ekbatana in the province of Madai that a scroll was found with this record written on it. In the first year of King Koresh, he issued a decree concerning the house of God in Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt as a place for offering sacrifices, and let its original foundations be retained. Its height is to be 90 feet, and its width 90 feet, with three layers of cut stones and one of timber. The cost is to be paid from the royal treasury. The gold and silver articles of God's house that Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple in Jerusalem and carried to Babel must also be returned. They are to be brought to the temple in Jerusalem where they belong and put into the house of God. Daryawish's Decree Therefore, you must stay away from that place, Tatanai, governor of the region west of the Euphrates River. Starbosnai and your colleagues, the officials in the region, leave the construction of the house of God alone. Let the governor and elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its original site. I hereby order a de- I hereby issue a decree concerning what you are to do so that the elders of the Jews can rebuild the house of God. The cost is to be paid in full to these men out of the royal revenues from the taxes of the region west of the Euphrates River so that the work will not stop. Whatever is needed young bulls, rams, and lambs for burnt offerings to the God of the heavens, or wheat, salt, wine, and oil, as requested by the priests in Jerusalem. Let it be given to them every day without fail, so that they can offer sacrifices of pleasing aroma to the God of the heavens, and pray for the life of the king and his sons. I also issue a decree concerning any man who interferes with this directive. Let a beam be torn from his house and raised up. He will be impaled on it, and his house will be made into a garbage dump because of this offense. May the God who caused his name to dwell there overthrow any king or people who dares to harm or interfere with this house of God in Jerusalem. I, Dar Yahweh, have issued the decree. Let it be carried out diligently. Then Tatanai, governor of the region west of the Euphrates River, Starbosnai, and their colleagues diligently carried out what King Dar Yahweh had decreed. So the Jewish elders continued successfully with the building under the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah son of Ido. They finished the building according to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of Koresh, Daryawish, and King Artachshas of Paras. This house was completed on the third day of the month of Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Daryawish. Temple Dedication and the Pesach Then the Israelites, including the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles, celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of God's house, they offered 100 bulls, 200 rams, and 400 lambs, as well as 12 male goats as a sin offering for all Israel one for each Israelite tribe. 
They also appointed the priests by their divisions and the Levites by their groups to the service of God in Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses. The exiles observed the Pesach on the 14th day of the first month. All of the priests and Levites were ceremonially clean because they had purified themselves. They killed the Pesach lamb for themselves, their priestly brothers, and all the exiles. The Israelites who had returned from exile ate it, together with all who had separated themselves from the uncleanness of the Gentiles of the land, in order to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. They observed the festival of unleavened bread, Matzah, for seven days with joy, because the Lord had made them joyful, having changed the Ashur king, his attitude toward them, so that he supported them in the work on the house of the God of Israel. And now let's jump over to Psalm 137 to finish. Psalm 137, Lament of the Exiles. By the rivers of Babel, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Sihon. There we hung up our lyres on the poplar trees, for our captors there asked us for songs and our tormentors for rejoicing. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song on foreign soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not exalt Jerusalem as my greatest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites said that day at Jerusalem. Destroy it! Destroy it down to its foundations! <laughs> Daughter Babel, doomed to destruction, Happy is the one who pays you back what you have done to us. Happy is he who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rocks. May the Lord bless the reading and study of his word.